Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, filling in for Alex. Alex is still in London. As a matter of fact, he was on the BBC this morning, and we're going to be having clips from that footage. Uh, out in the green room, he actually confronted the shadow chancellor of the Exchequer, Ed Balls, on why he was in attendance at Bilderberg, and so did Paul Joseph Watson. So we're going to have some clips of that, as well as clips of the interview. And we've got a lot of breaking news today. If you remember, it was The Guardian that first broke out the news about uh, spying by the American government on the American people with Verizon. And then subsequent to that, we have seen information about how they are tapping everybody's data online on the cloud from various companies, from Microsoft, from Google, from Facebook, you name it. They have access to it. And we saw the secret document that was leaked internally from the NSA showing when various companies had come online with the PRISM pr program. And now today, we've got some new breaking news from The Guardian again. The whistleblower who released that first bit of information about the illegal phone activity by the NSA spying on Americans under the Foreign Intelligence Security Act. They were spying on Americans, which James Clapper, director of NSA, lied to the Senate just as recently as March, telling them no such thing was happening. Well, we have a whistleblower who has now come out and is talking about why he did it and the implications for what the government is doing to people. An amazing interview, and we're going to be talking about excerpts from that. But first, I've got to say, and we're going to be playing the entire interview that Alex had with the BBC. It was pretty amazing to see how the BBC has handled itself. Now, the irony, as we've talked about before, is that they would have one of the largest influence peddling scandals ever to affect the UK. They've had at least four members of parliament who have resigned just recently. Now, of course, those were also from journalist stings. These were journalists who went in, and uh, just like we see happen here sometimes with Veritas Project, they went in and offered illegal influence, pay, pay off for illegal influence to these uh, members of parliament and got them on tape accepting it. And these guys have subsequently resigned. But of course, that wasn't the BBC that was involved in that. No, the BBC had nothing to do with that. That was another journalistic out, uh, outpost. The BBC, on the other hand, is basically the lapdog of these guys. For 60 years, they never covered Bilderberg, even though BBC had leaked information that showed that in 1955, they were planning the Euro, the EU, and many other things. The BBC likes to pretend that not only did that not happen, but the Bilderberg itself did not exist. This year, they could not ignore it. They looked foolish. But, you know, the stages of progression that Mahatma Gandhi gave us, he said, first they ignore you, then they ridicule you. And that's the stage that we are right now. After the beginning... This introduction, when they had Alex there, the presenter had this little set piece that was amazingly smarmy, amazingly condescending. And then they talk about what's going on there and try to backpedal and pretend that nothing of any interest is going on there. Isn't it amazing that the BBC did the same thing with the Jimmy Seville scandal? Here you've got a pedophile right amongst their midst for decades operating, hundreds of children victims of this pedophile, this procurer of children for the elite. And the BBC not only did nothing about it, but once one person in the BBC broke the story, the BBC covered it up. It was a major scandal at the BBC that they covered up that scandal. And they still haven't done much to report on that. But we have a history of the BBC covering up not only what is happening with the abuse of Bilderberg, of people all over the world, but even amongst their midst, the abuse of children. These are, I guess you could describe BBC journalism as see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. No matter how bad it is, they have nothing to say about it. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about this leak of information from this whistleblower and what he has to say about why he did it and what our government is doing to us. Stay tuned. We're going to have Alex join us at the bottom of the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alex Jones. We are live on this Sunday. Alex's audio is cutting in and out on us. We're going to be right back with him. We're going to reestablish some contact. Uh, it's Sunday, June 9th. Alex is in London covering Bilderberg. I'm David Knight here back at the home studio. 
A lot of information breaking today. We've got uh, Alex storming the BBC. We've got Bill Maurer and liberals defending the NSA surveillance grid. You know, when I look at Bill Maurer doing this, I, I think about the fact that uh, what a rabid atheist he is. And whenever you deny the real God, you're going to make men into gods. And basically, that's what he does. He's got his security surveillance state that he's making into a god there. Uh, we've got another phony jobs report from the government that lies about everything. And that's... Uh, Article up on InfoWars from Paul Craig Roberts. He was the former Reagan Assistant Secretary of the Treasury. He knows what he's talking about. As a matter of fact, there's a great book by author Vox, V-O-X, Day. And he talks about exactly the mechanism of how they lie over and over again, releasing one set of economic statistics and then revising them the next quarter into something that's a little bit closer to reality, but how they play games with the way they define jobs and the way they define the loss or gain of jobs. We also have an article up on uh, InfoWars talking about the NSA's Boundless Informant. That's the, that's the name of the program that the government gave it, was Boundless Informant. And that basically pretty much describes what it was. It's informing on the American people, and it truly is boundless. They collect 3 billion, 3 billion intelligence pieces from the networks in just one month. Doing the math on that, that works out to 100 million per day. 100 million per day. And as this article from uh, that's up on Infowars, it's originally from ZeroHedge.com. As I said, this whole China is hacking us script may promptly fall apart. That's right, folks. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous that they're trying to use the trying to scare people about cyber terrorism from other countries. When we find out that the biggest cyber terrorist of them all is the United States government and has been for quite some time. We've been telling you about that. Of course, the BBC didn't cover that. The American news media didn't cover that. But we've had whistleblowers who have talked about that. We've had documents that have been exposed talking about that, even though the mainstream media hasn't covered it. It is a reality. It is not a conspiracy theory. And hopefully now that people can see some of these documents and see the amazing reaction of the government to this, it is absolutely, truly amazing. Let me just read one more excerpt from this uh, Zero Hedge Fund about boundless informant. He says that uh, James Clapper, that's the head of the NSA, announced earlier today uh, that citizens falling under the NSA's espionage mandate of Section 702 cannot be used to intentionally target any U.S. citizen or any other U.S. person or to intentionally target any person known to be in the United States. Well, that's the law. That's the law that they passed, FISA, which in and of itself flew directly into the face of the Constitution and denied constitutional protections. But even that unconstitutional assertion of power, they have broken. They will not even stay in line with their uh, overreaching Patriot Act and FISA. And look at the reaction. Look at the reaction of these people. They say that uh, uh, they're going to come after whoever did this. They're not... They're not repentant. They're not sorry about what they did. They're just sorry that they got caught like a real thief. Alex, what do you have to say about this? Well, I got stuck out here in the field reporting, so I'm not back to our studio with good audio. So I'm driving on the road right now via Skype. But as soon as I get back to our home base and I come back to Austin tomorrow, I'm here in London, England. Uh, I will uh, call them with a ton of inside breaking news. Uh, but absolutely, it's a felony to have all the phone records of every Verizon customer handed over to the White House so they can target and harass libertarians, conservatives, others, go after pro-life groups, uh, spy on church. This is authoritarianism. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It, absolutely. Uh, I think you're breaking up a little bit. Can you, uh, Alex, are you there? Uh, we lost yeah, him again. I am, David. I'll just, okay, I'll, we got you. I think we got you. No, I think we've lost you. Okay. I was just going to go over the, as, as Alex pointed out, this is a huge felony. Just remember that it was a handful of journalists, a handful of journalists that Nixon and Kissinger, uh, who was <laughs> at pulling the strings on that, just a handful of journalists that uh, they uh, were accused of in Watergate. And that caused the resignation of a president because he was going to be impeached for that as well as other crimes. And we know that 
just spying on citizens isn't the only thing that Obama has done. But let's look at what this administration has done. Not only have we repeatedly seen members of the Obama administration lie under oath, lying about the tapping of citizens' phones, lying about the way they're using the IRS, lying about fast and furious, under oath, repeatedly. But we also see them now openly asserting that they didn't do anything wrong, that they have the power to listen to all of our phone conversations. As a result, we've put up a, a new petition, uh, InfoWars has. You might check this out on the whitehouse.com. Uh, it is, this is the wording of the petition. President Richard Nixon resigned after wiretapping a handful of journalists, sparing the nation the ordeal of impeachment. We call on Obama to do the same. His administration vetted the NSA's surveillance of millions of Americans and seriously violated the Fourth Amendment. He confiscated personal records of reporters, thus violating the First Amendment. And the IRS, under his watch, harassed political organizations opposed to his policies. Moreover, his administration has lied under oath to Congress. And in addition to violating Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution by invading Libya, his administration engaged in torture and conducted a covert drone war. Due to the severity of these crimes, we call for the immediate resignation of Barack Obama. That's a petition that InfoWars put up on, actually, I think it was Kurt Nemo uh, put that up under his name on the White House. Uh, feel free to go to the White House and sign that petition. I think we're at a juncture right now where if we don't stand up and do something about this criminal regime, it's going to be interpreted as acceptance. They're going to make this the new normal. We already have Obama and James Clapper, the NSA chief, saying that the government is going to open a criminal probe into the NSA leaks. But, of course, they got beat to it because the person who actually leaked this has now gone public in The Guardian. He's in Hong Kong, and he talks about why he did it. Uh, now, this is what they asked him. They said, why did you decide to become a whistleblower? And the person's name is Edward Snowden. And he said, the NSA has built an infrastructure that allows it to intercept almost everything. With this capability, the vast majority of human communications are automatically ingested without targeting. If I wanted to see your emails or your wife's phone, all I have to do is use intercepts. I can get your emails, your passwords, your phone records, your credit cards. Now, this is what he says, which is really key. I don't want to live in a society, and neither do I that does these sorts of things. I do not want to live in a world where everything I do and say is recorded. That is not something I am willing to support or to live under. And then they play devil's advocate and they say, but isn't there a need for surveillance to try to reduce the chances of terrorist attacks like Boston? He said, we have to decide why terrorism is now a new threat. See, it is not a new threat. It is uh, just police work that needs to be done. It's not an excuse for them to go in and start tapping everybody's phones and listening to everybody's conversation and recording everything and storing it, the Utah Data Center, so that they can in the future, when their software is better, go back and data mine that and use that to threaten, to blackmail, to jail people. We already have more people jailed in the United States than any other country in terms of absolute numbers more than China. And China has a population that is many times the size of our population and a very authoritarian government. What does it say about our government? that we have that sort of thing. We're going to be right back. We're going to get Alex Jones on the show, joining us here from London. We've got a little bit of transmission problems, but he will be joining us shortly. I'm David Knight. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex here in Austin, and we have Alex on the road in London. He's there covering Bilderberg, and he's had some interesting encounters earlier today at the BBC. Alex, are you there? Absolutely, uh, David. Uh, again, once I get back into a better zone, uh, back into my hotel, I, I should be with you in the second hour uh, tonight. Uh, sorry about the technical problems. The uh, wonders of audio Skype uh, don't seem to work too well uh, over here in London some of the time, but am I coming through to you? Yeah, loud and clear right okay. now. Okay, let me just lay out what's coming up tonight. Look, uh, they've now broken uh, in the news. It's, it's, it's in the British press. Right now, this just broke, uh, that the new NSA information with Verizon handing over millions of customers' data on conservatives, libertarians, everybody, and so they could harass and spy on us. Uh, the whistleblower was an NSA mid-level person, and they've had to go to political asylum in Hong Kong. 
and 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 his name is now public, and he went on to say that it's sad that America is thought of as free, but I have to go to a country that's not known as being very free to even be able to get this free speech. It is illegal when the NSA randomly listens and grabs data. But listen, none of this is a secret. Austinites remember me in 1996 on the air when it was in MIT mag a magazine, when it was in the congressional record, when all the tech publications were reporting $9 billion of taxpayer money to upgrade the NSA uh, snooping systems that are built into all the telecommunications hubs. This is an absolute fact. All of our listeners have heard me break down the Telecommunications Act of 96. Anyone can go read it. It said that by 2001, all cell phones had to have tracker systems hardwired into them to track everywhere you are and turn your phone on and listen to it even when it's off so you can't know. I went on and on and on. We broke every bit of this down. And just like the IRS is persecuting pro-lifers and gun uh, rights organizations and libertarian and conservative groups and veterans groups and Jewish groups, they are using all of this not to catch us in doing bad things, but to know what we're doing. To be uh, Google was set up by the NSA 14 years ago on record with CIA funding from NQTEL. That's what's so frustrating. This is all public. And they just tell you, no one's listening to you. That's a crazy man, Alex Jones. And there's no secret death camps. And there's no FEMA camps. And there's no torture. And fluoride's good for you. And the vaccines are good for you. When it's all on record, it's killing us. Harvard studies the fluoride's killing us. Har you know, mainline studies the vaccines are killing us. Thousands of studies on fluoride alone. Hundreds on GMO. This is a program. And it's just like they would say, Bilderberg doesn't exist. Bilderberg doesn't exist. Bilderberg doesn't exist over and over and over again. There are no secret groups. There's no lobbying groups. Oh, so some royalty and robber barons and the Rockefellers are meeting with government heads in secret. It doesn't exist. Okay, it exists, but don't worry about it. So what if it violates British law? So what if it violates federal law, the Logan Act? We have all those laws, by the way, listed on Infowars.com in a red-linked article. And today, I went and was on the biggest Sunday news show in the United Kingdom, in Ireland, Scotland, and England. I was on the biggest show, the uh, Sunday politics show. And I went in there, and they wouldn't let me get the information out. They made jokes about Bilderberg. They made jokes right before I came on about, you know, he claims they're putting poison in the water and had a Bilderberg Group member, uh, one of the top ministers in the government, laugh at everybody. And so I came out and gave it to him with both barrels. We're going to play that coming up in the next segment. We'll come in. It'll basically fill the whole segment. David Knight uh, can uh, introduce it briefly. And then we'll come back after that segment and play some of the excerpts of my speech yesterday to 2,000 people on a grassy knoll right across from the Grove uh, Estates and Hotel where 150 world leaders, including the head of Google, the Prime Minister of England, the Queen of the Netherlands, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, uh, Bill Gates, all of them were meeting. And let me tell you what happened after I gave this 45-minute speech. And they had to turn away a 1,000 people because they couldn't even fit. When I gave this speech, uh, the police came over, the head police, the deputy police chief, and said, I want to hug, you're right, and hug me. And the police lined up and were demanding to hug me and, and had tears on their eyes and said, we know it's basically true. I mean, that is the level of awakening that we are seeing happening because they've lied about all this corruption. They've lied about all this tyranny. They've lied about all this fraud for so long. They've gotten in everybody's face for so long saying none of this exists that now it's being admitted that it exists, the tyranny, the spying, the torture, the government funding al-Qaeda, uh, you know, running all these tyrannical groups, being totally ruthless. Of course they are. We gave them all this incredible power. We gave them uh, all of this 
uh, you know, free reign. And of course, they took advantage of it. That's why we have a Bill of Rights and Constitution, because our forebearers have gone through this. All our ancestors, no matter where you come from in the world, Asia, Africa, Latin America, Europe, it doesn't matter. Everybody goes through this. That's why we keep tyrants in check. That's why we are jealous of our freedom. That's why it's important that people be aware and be involved and understand what's happening. And so many historical things are happening. But I go into the green room, about to go on the biggest, you know, it's like Meet the Press here in the UK. In fact, it's basically their Meet the Press show. Meet the Press is modeled after it. And, and, and you know, they you know, have the prime minister on it last week. And this week they had the head of the exchequer on. And, you know, that's their treasury. And the head of the treasury... Uh, because they have a parliament, so they have like two heads of it. So the out-of-power party is the labor. So the shadow exchequer of their treasury is in there right before me, and I'm in studio with him, and when they go to break to play a promo that I'm coming up, I walk over and confront him, and I go, you're a Bilderberg Group member. You were in there, and he says, I can't talk about it. That video is on InfoWars.com. Then he walks out, I go on TV, Paul Watson, of uh, InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, my reporter, confronts him and says, you're breaking the federal law in the UK. We're going to play that clip towards the end of the hour. And he's, it, no government minister can be in a secret policy meeting. It has to be recorded. There has to be minutes. That's, that's federal law here in the UK. And he says, I'm not a government minister when he's a sitting member of parliament and also the head of the Treasury for Labor. Uh, again, it's the Tories that are in power right now, but they have power sharing, so it's like a multi-facet. They have like two heads of it. You know, the first, he's, he's like the vice president of the Treasury. All of this was going on. They had the head of the Treasury, the vice president of the Treasury, uh, the prime minister, all these leaders of the UK in there, and they've been caught lobbying. There's a huge lobbying scandal going on right now inside the United Kingdom with people resigning and all this corruption on, on fake wind farms and people getting paid off and all this stuff. And that's the tip of the iceberg. Lockheed Martin got paid paying off Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. All this, it's all coming up. But first, this big confrontation where I get in the BBC's face and wake the people of the UK up is coming up. And then more, part of my speech. And David Knight, riding shotgun as traffic cop. Stay with us. It's the Info War from England. Every year, usually the very posh occasion to discuss, well, who knows? Because, as you've seen, it's all very hush-hush. Guests include the likes of Henry Kissinger, the head of the IMF, and our very own Prime Minister, as well as Mr. Bowles. The PM joined them for this year's top-secret tete-a-tete, which was being held this weekend in the... Do -do 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 Watford! Sunny Watford. It's where world domination begins. It's like Christmas for conspiracy theorists, including our Adam. The masters of the universe and their critics have spent the weekend at Watford's posh Grove Hotel for the annual Bilderberg meeting. Could that be the Prime Minister? Did George Osborne and Ed Balls share a ride? Is that the boss of Amazon or of Google? Usually top, top secret, this year the organisers have released a list of the roughly 150 people in there and the topics they've been discussing, including growth, big data and uh, current affairs. The protesters outside accuse this group of everything, from climate change to coups, but they're mainly annoyed about the lack of transparency. The man in the middle of the crowd is Alex Jones, king of the conspiracy theorists. Are there any conspiracy theories out there that you think are just too nuts and are just too extreme? How about these guys? Yeah, I don't personally think they're extraterrestrials or anything like some people say. <laughs> Scary stuff, but this protest seems more like a slightly weird party. It's just corporate mega death, so we're here to destroy them all. It's surrounded by a ring of steel and a big but fairly relaxed police presence, which Bilderberg veterans say is a big change. Well, I had a baptism of fire in 2009, just outside Athens, so I went along and tried to cover it and got spent a week being arrested, arrested, re-arrested. While for residents of Watford, it's a bit so what? Well, I heard it was their secret shadow government meetings. Um, hasn't been held in England for 
a long, long while. And what do you think of that? What? <laughs> Secret shadow government. What's that? Back at base, very few of the 22 invitees from the UK wanted to talk. Well, I just managed to speak to a very senior Bilderberger on the phone. I asked him why all the secrecy, and he said until the 1990s, they used to hold press conferences after every meeting, but no journalists turned up, so they stopped doing them. Then, as if by magic, a member of the organisation's influential steering committee turned up in the BBC's offices. <laughs> what goes with Bilderberg is an informal discussion about politics and the world's problems with a lot of politicians and businessmen. Um, and we uh, always produce lists of who's there, it's not secret. But we don't have a mass audience listening to our discussions, so it's, it's, it's a good informal weekend where we get together. Uh, the, the internet is full of nutty theories about how we're ruling the world, we're going to invade America, we're poisoning the water courses, all this kind of thing. Uh, it's very much duller than that, I can assure you. Oh, I'm actually slightly disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so sinister after all. But luckily, I'm told there's a Bilderberg splinter group called the Trilateral, which includes the Chinese. And you know how open they are. That was Adam Fleming reporting from Watford. We've not seen him since. So if you see him, point him back here. We're joined by Alec Jones, an American shock jock. He's been campaigning for more openness at the Bilderberg Conference. David Aronovich, who's a, always sniffy about conspiracy theories. He's a columnist for The Times. Alex Jones, you've been covering Bilderberg for a long time. What have you ever found out about it? In that piece you just played, there's nothing in the water. Hydrofluorosilicic acid in major Harvard studies has been causing a seven-fold increase in bone What's cancer. What's that got to do with Boom. Bilderberg? What have I discovered about Bilderberg? The yeah. BBC was able to get the documents decades ago that they helped found the Euro, which was actually a Nazi German plan ah. to take over countries economically. No, that's on record. And I've interviewed members of the EU yeah. Parliament on the subject who were out there at the event. But what's that? 3,000 people. With they turned 1,000. Bilderberg is heavily involved in the EU plan and helped hatch it, and it is a Nazi plan. They had Lockheed so, scandals, just like the big lobbying scandals right now in the 70s, and that's why the SS officer, Prince Bernard, the founder, had to step down. So, it is the ultimate lobbying meeting. While you guys have this huge scandal going on, your prime minister's going there, okay. uh, uh, Balls was just here, Bilderberg group member, we have forced them from cover to admit that there are puppeteers above the okay, major parties. David so now we know how, now we know that Bilderberg has given us the euro. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, if you talk to Alex for any length of time, you discover all kinds of things that you didn't know about the world. We've blown it wide open. Um, you have. You have absolutely blown it wide open. But it leaves me with a huge question for you, Alex. And it's really, you have uncovered the new world order, which is deadly. It's full of what I you call people who are criminals. Well, this is what I'm coming to. It's full of criminals, etc., who seek to run the world and will kill anybody who gets in their way. And you are almost, or have been, a lone crusader powering against them. No, that's so, not, how come... How am I alive? How, how are you still alive? Why am I alive? No, which, is the, yeah. listen, 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 alive? which is the explanation? One, they don't exist. Or two, you're part of the conspiracy. No, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. I uh, say the first. Five years ago when Obama and Hillary... I say the second. Five years ago when Hillary and Obama were at Bilderberg and the Secret Service was there in helicopters, the New York Times came out and said I was crazy. There was no Bilderberg group meeting. And my wife got phone calls, and so did I, threatening to kill us. And the people said, and you better take it serious because you were just talking to your dad that was in the hospital. You better shut your mouth or we're going to cut your head off. But now, that, no, if that's they the, were going to kill that, you, they, they listened to, they wouldn't they listened to everybody's the phone lines. They call up and harass people that expose them well, and tell them and tell so, them so what the, they were just talking about they, they, are, they Alex, harass you're people. Alex, you're going to say there's no spy. It's here. like not oh, no. Germany. Oh, no. The only spy on the bad guys, oh. huh? You let, you let him speak now. Well, well, Alex, I Alex, saw one of your ministers say this, though. No, Alex, you let I'm him here. Speak. I'm, there's tyranny. No, shut up. I'm, 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 here, I, I'm here to testify that your head was not cut off. Ladies well, and gentlemen, are you sure if about they that? kill me, it turns me into a martyr. It, it, it puts big exclamation points on the end of what I've said, and I have put out a lot of information. There's millions of others that are exposing it. And the look, we have mega banks that are getting $85 billion a month of U.S. taxpayer money. Most of it goes to Europe and England. Uh, British taxpayers, EU taxpayers have to pay to these mega bankers. They're right. in there setting this up. It's come out. And then the media yeah. distracts you with, oh, oh right. look at a guy that okay. talked to a lobbyist right. when the real lobbyist okay, is going listen, on. Listen, you're not going to dominate this. He gets to speak to. It's not your own radio show. Uh, should we be worried about Builder Group at all? 
It's a kind of, it's mildly interesting, the Bilderberg Group, and it feels, doesn't it, when you were talking about it in the, in the film, slightly kind of out of date as belonging to the era when of the you Cold couldn't, War. yeah, when you couldn't even admit in Parliament that there was a, you know, when we called the head of MI5M or whatever it was we called them, we couldn't admit to these things. Yeah. And so to the extent that it seems people aren't ready to be spied on yet. Uh, uh, what was that a fact? People anyway. haven't been acclimated yet. Could you let him finish? We're in right. a police state. It's 1984. Yeah, listen, well, how, you guys how, just how want to normalize it. Would you let him Alex, finish? Alex, how come you're here? If we're in a police state, how yeah. come they actually saying? turned back some of my reporters, but they didn't turn me back, and I was told this think, because they don't want to make a stink. Do you think the BBC is part of the Bilderberg Group? Well, uh, you know, Winston Smith did work here. I mean, come on, Eric Blair worked here, and that's what he said it was. Why do you think we've let you on? Why have we let you on then? Uh, because you guys think that you can manage the whole thing, and now our information's gotten too big. I have three million radio listeners a day. That's a low number. Three million. I get about 50 million YouTube uh, views a month. That's a very conservative number. I make films, put them online for free, that get watched 40 okay. million times, like the Obama deception. Uh -huh. And that's why, because the establishment All doesn't right. know what to do. No, I, I, no, Alex, no, Alex has this point, and it's, a, and it's an important one. I would have, say, 10 years ago said, Listen to all this stuff. He believes that people put cancer virus in vaccine in order in order to create a eugenics program. That's what he that's yeah. what he believes. We talk it's, about it's like medical that. discoveries. And, and, and we would have said, and we would and I would have said, hey, that's kind of mad and so on. And it's an interesting psychological phenomenon. Like just missing. Like the, prob the problem is the conspiracy theories like this are oh, believed. I believed in Hey, listen, I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. Okay, our government in the U.S. is building FEMA camps. We have an NDAA where they disappear people now. You have this arrest for public safety, life in prison. You are the worst it, person I've ever interviewed. No, no, it's basically off it. with their heads, disappearing. David, thank you for being with us. It's half past 11. You're watching the Sunday politics. We have an idiot on the program today. Coming up in just 20 minutes. You will not stop the republic. Humanity is awakening. Infowars.com. No. You guys are I'll be looking at the week the ahead with our political stupid. panel. You're Until crazy. then, the think Sunday the politics across know. the You're UK. Crazy. Think of the public isn't waking up. We now is the perfect time to... Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex here in Austin. Alex is still in London. Finishing up Bilderberg coverage. And as you just heard in the last segment, he was on this morning on the BBC News' main news program, an interview there. That was pretty amazing to watch how smarmy and condescending they were. But it's been interesting to see that the two contacts that Alex has had with the BBC, the first one, the reporter, was coming back with nonsensical replies to everything he was saying, and non sequiturs, and just trying to provoke Alex, as she said later on, into uh, getting upset. And he was laying out a very clear presentation of what Bilderberg was about and about how it had been ignored by the mainstream media. And as he's talking about how it was ignored by the mainstream media, she's ignoring everything that he's saying and saying, you're just making this up, aren't you? What we've seen here, especially in this last interview segment, is how the BBC has moved from the ignoring segment into the ridicule segment. That's the progression of events, as Mahatma Gandhi said. First they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, then you win. And we are actually in the fight right now. They may be in the ridicule stage, we're in the fight stage. It's very easy to try to demagogue these issues because there's something that the mainstream media is not presenting. When you come in and say the government is listening to everything that you're saying on any electronic communication, they're reading your emails, they're tapping your phones. When you start saying that, it may sound paranoid to people who haven't heard this. Alex has been saying this for 17 years because this has a very long history. Now people are seeing that that is truly, in fact, what they are doing. Just as he's been talking about the Bilderberg meetings and how they meet in secret in violation of transparency laws and accountability laws in most of the countries. In violation of the Logan Act that we have here in this country. These people are meeting and it's massive influence peddling and we have notes from their minutes that uh, show what they are doing globally. And yet, when you put that out there, it's a very different, very radically different paradigm. And as you saw, Alex was uh, basically getting in their face because that's one way to wake people up because they're so used to this very quiet speech, especially on the BBC. It's a great way to wake people up to shout at them. But if people really want to know what's going on, put it to the test. Go to Infowars.com. Take a look at the articles there. Yeah, it's hard to believe that the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, is buying billions of bullets. Billions of bullets. It's pretty hard to 
to believe that, isn't it? But when you go to our articles, we've got links to the RFPs. We have links to the documents from Bilderberg. We document what we do. We have to do it more than the BBC because unlike the BBC, people aren't going to accept what we say just on faith. We have to show them the actual evidence. Now, Alex was doing a lot of uh, this throughout Bilderberg, and he had a great speech at the Bilderberg uh, meeting yesterday. We had the uh, Fringe Festival. Basically, it was thousands of people that was kind of wrapping up the protests, and they had David Icke speaking, and Alex spoke yesterday, and here's an excerpt from that speech. For Alex Jones, please. <laughs> Roots, nowhere do you have to actually climb on the stage. I love it! Yeah. And that's how you can just see the incredible humanity that is here. And I want to salute every single man, woman, and child that have traveled here from all over jolly old England and the rest of the world. I salute you! Yeah. <laughs> this is so historic what is happening right now. And I want to start getting into that here in just a moment. But first off, I want to point out there are thousands of people in here right now, but they are turning away thousands of others who couldn't get parking and who they're not letting in. So let it be known that the BBC will probably report there were five people here. But that's why they're discredited. That's why the power structure is falling apart. I actually had the BBC, of like six interviews I've done with them, one of the ladies said, so you say there's a meeting going on here. So you claim there's something called the Bilderberg Group. Are you insane? That's how stupid they think their viewers are. But the truth is, they're losing all their viewers because people are awake to the globalists and their lying propaganda organs. <laughs> they're arrogant. They are so used to a population that will buy anything they're told that they are destroying their own credibility more and more. There is no doubt that trillions of dollars a month worldwide are stolen from the people of the West to finance the globalist takeover of the planet. And what's so dangerous about it is the globalists have all written books, all made statements about what their plan is for the New World Order. Their plan is worldwide poverty and forced population reduction. They want to bankrupt every family in the world except for a few dozen families so they can control you with their fiat currency and bring in total technocratic world slavery. And the reason there are so many people here today and millions watching in the real free press across the world is because humanity has figured out that we're in deep trouble and that these dangerous parasites have ill will towards us. It's not that they don't care about us. They care about killing us. They want the world for themselves. They've stolen the governments. They've stolen the money. They've stolen the cultures. They've stolen almost everything. And now they want us out of the way so they can move forward into the future with all the technology that humankind developed. They take the ideas and the energy of you, the creative, and they use it against you. And I'm here to tell you how to stop them. Fight them with information, fight them with truth, fight them with art, and never give up and realize that we are. And realize that we are in a war. 
that they are attacking us, that they are attacking our families, that they are attacking our nations, that they are attacking our cultures. They want us absolutely neutralized so they can take over this planet, and I'm going to break that down today. But first off, I want to say this. The globalists absolutely are angry today to know the shadow government, the shadow government and the, the, the periscope of their subterranean world tyranny that has popped up just a few hundred yards away from us, the Bilderberg Group, they have fought for 60 years to maintain their secrecy. And they have threatened their reporters and, and their media institutions all over the world that they would be fired if they ever even wrote the words Bilderberg. And now all of us together and the real media have forced this out in the open. And I'm here to tell you without a shadow of a doubt, today is the true beginning of the fall of the Bilderberg Group. Today, today. That's pretty is amazing. You know, beginning. the BBC's credibility couldn't fall any farther. First, they announced the fall of Building 7 20 minutes before it happened, with the building still standing in the background of the reporter. You have to ask, what was up with that? And many people have. And then they do this hit piece, basically, finally admitting that Bilderberg actually exists, just as they've been forced to admit that the child predation of Jimmy Seville celebrated celebrity amongst their mitts that they covered up and then covered up after the fact after it became public knowledge they did their best to penalize the reporters the real reporters of the bbc who brought that out but i think it's interesting to look at how the the silly ways that they cover this they actually had a clown and a ventriloquist well you know who the real clowns and the real ventriloquist dummies are it's the presenters who are the shills for the B, for the politicians and the corporations that are at Bilderberg. These people have lost all credibility. It's just amazing. But the information is getting out there. Alex is putting it out there. And we're going to be talking more to Alex live from London right after this break. Stay tuned. Alex Jones, Jones is going to be joining us briefly. And I'm David Knight here at Austin. It's uh, Sunday, June the 9th. And uh, Alex is covering Bilderberg. It's the last day he's going to be there. Earlier today, he was on the BBC. We had a clip from that. We also had clips of the festival where he addressed thousands of people yesterday, telling them exactly what's going on. Of course, those people were there. They knew about Bilderberg. And that's the key. The information is getting out there. They cannot suppress this anymore. We just heard that BBC piece that they had in the uh, last segment. They were incredibly saying that the Bilderberg people used to hold press conferences through the 90s, but nobody came. Yeah, right. <laughs> Anybody can look at the history of this. They can look at how people were laughed at and ridiculed if they even talked about the existence of Bilderberg. There were no press conferences. You heard Charlie Skelton from The Guardian talking about how in 2009, he went to cover Bilderberg in Greece, and he was getting arrested over and over and over again. Well, what's going on in Greece now? Well, in Greece now, they're seeing the fruits of the Bilderberg plans. They're seeing the austerity programs that are being imposed upon them by Goldman Sachs, former Goldman Sachs bankers, technocrats, as they like to call them, who have deposed duly elected Democratic representative government and come in with their bankers' fiats. Of course, they get the countries to assume the losses from their ridiculous derivative schemes, their speculative schemes, and assume those as national losses. And then they come back and say, well, now you're bankrupt. So we're going to dictate to you the terms. Just amazing. But that's what you get when you allow the most powerful bankers and corporations to meet secretly and privately with politicians and use them as puppets and ventriloquist dummies over decades, 60 years this has been going on. Not quite as long as the Jimmy, well, the Jimmy Savile scandals went on almost that long. He didn't uh, live quite that long. But uh, yeah, Bilderberg is even longer than the Jimmy Savile scandals that the BBC has covered up. Also breaking today is information, new information, about who was the whistleblower in the Verizon leaks. We now know that this person uh, was a 29-year-old um, Edward Snowden, who worked for the uh, NSA as a... Uh, uh, and capacity. He's worked for them just a couple of years. And The Guardian, which originally broke that story, had an interesting interview with him, a question and answer. He is now 
in Hong Kong. And he doesn't expect that he'll ever see America again because he knows that if he comes back into this country, somebody who exposes the illegal and criminal acts of the American government is going to be treated the way Bradley Manning was treated. We need to do something about that. We need to make sure that isn't happening. We need to make sure that the real criminals are going to go to jail. The real criminals like Bush and like Obama. I am sick and tired of seeing the left-right paradigm being used to excuse both of these guys. Every time you see something done by Bush, the excuse is, well, Clinton did that or did something worse than that or the equivalent of that. And you see the same thing going on now with Obama. You see people on the left who opposed George Bush's encroachments and violations of our civil liberties now excusing it for Obama saying George Bush did it. Why well, say put them both in jail? We need to at least get Obama out of office, even if we're not going to put him and George Bush in jail. Let's say that this is going to end here and now, because if we accept this, there is no end to this. And that's what they want. They want us to just acquiesce to this massive usurpation of power, this denial of our basic fundamental human rights. They asked him uh, in this interview from The Guardian, they asked uh, Edward Snowden, who leaked this information. They said, do you think what you've done is a crime? And he said... We've seen enough criminality on the part of government. It is hypocritical to make this allegation against me. They have narrowed the public sphere of influence. In other words, they have created a secretive tyranny. They also asked him, what do these leaked documents reveal? And he says that the NSA routinely lies in response to congressional inquiries about the scope of surveillance in America. That was the basis for getting rid of Richard Nixon. Why don't we use that to get rid of Obama? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. With more of Alex Jones, we'll have Alex live from London. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we've got Alex who's going to join us right now, live from London. Alex, how you doing? Absolutely. We're out here going from spot to spot, doing uh, special reports, gathering. Uh, we've still got a little bit of spotty reception there, though. We're just breaking up a little bit. Tell you what, we're going to come right back to Alex as we work on that. We were just talking about this breaking news of the person who leaked the Verizon information has now come public. He is taking asylum in Hong Kong, and we, he was being interviewed by uh, The Guardian. That was released today as to why he did it and what his concerns are, why he would release this, why he would put himself at jeopardy. Because we know, as James Clapper, head of the NSA, has said, he is not apologizing for violating, blatant violation of the law. James Clapper is not apologizing for lying to the Senate. Instead, he's saying he's going to go after whoever it was that leaked this stuff. So this young 29-year-old man uh, leaked this stuff out there, and hats off to him for doing this. Our, he has our gratitude for telling people what's going on, what he's seen on the inside. They asked him from The Guardian, they said, what do the leak documents reveal? And he said, the NSA is routinely lying in response to congressional inquiries about the scope of surveillance in America. That was back in March 12th, I believe it was. James Clapper lied to the Senate. He says, I believe that when Senator Wyden and Senator Mark Udall asked about the scale of this, the NSA said that it did not have the tools to provide an answer. We do have the tools, and I have maps showing where people have been scrutinized the most. Now, remember, this is being done under the Foreign Intelligence Securities Act which in itself, in my opinion, is a clear violation of the Constitution and their constitutional authority. But it was supposedly okay because the rights of people outside of America don't make any difference, right? Those are the people outside of America that we can just drop bombs on and invade at will. It doesn't really matter because if you're not an American, you're not a real person. They can just kill you at will or listen to your spy on you. That's not true. And when we allow that... When we allow them to do that to other people, to other human beings in other countries, basically these are people who do not respect human rights. And if they don't respect human rights, they're not going to respect American rights either. He says, we collect, he goes on to say, we collect more digital communications from America than we do from the Russians. You see, that's how this FISA is working out. Supposedly, they were only collecting information from foreign people, and yet he's telling us, having worked there, that they're collecting more information from Americans than they are from Russians. Then they go on to ask him and say, is it possible to put security in place to protect against state surveillance? This is his answer. You are not even aware of what is possible. See, we've been talking about this for a long time. Alex mentioned the fact that 
even back in 1996 on public access television in Austin, he was talking about this because it was being leaked at that time. Even earlier than that, there was Project Echelon, which was going through combing the Internet, which was at that time in its infancy, for the most part operating through bulletin boards and that sort of thing. They were still combing those messages for keywords and uh, we, we used to send those keywords at the bottom of all of our messages. I think people ought to start thinking about that. I think we need to basically clutter with chatter uh, the NSA sifting and combing through our messages by basically putting all the keywords that they're looking for at the bottom of our messages as a signature. That'd be one way to clog up the works. We need to throw a, a wrench in the, uh, in the gear somehow. He says, you're not even aware of what's possible. This is the person who leaked this, who worked for the NSA. He said, the extent of their capabilities is horrifying, horrifying. We can plant bugs and machines. Once you go on the network, I can identify your machine. You will never be safe, whatever protections you put in place. We have to have some real criminal penalties for people like James Clapper, people like Obama who have nothing but contempt for not only the rule of law, but of basic human rights. If we tolerate this kind of illegal activity by those who are the most powerful, who have all of these tools in hand, we are headed to an Orwellian nightmare that is far beyond anything George Orwell ever imagined. We're already there. They already have that capability. We just have to get people awake to it and to care about it. You need to talk to your friends and neighbors and talk to them about why this is so horrific. It truly is amazing. And this fellow, Edward Snowden, was willing to basically become a refugee for the rest of his life, a man without a country. And he's now in Hong Kong. And I can tell you, Hong Kong is a much freer place than America. Many countries are now freer than America. We need to get rid of this complacency, thinking that we can never lose our freedoms in America because, hey, we're Americans, right? We can't lose our freedom. We're the most free people in the world. Well, that simply isn't true. It's become a mantra, and it could be nothing further from the truth. It's interesting to go back and take a look, for example, at an old series that uh, Milton Friedman did called Free to Choose. He focused quite a bit on Hong Kong, talking about how much freer Hong Kong is. Hong Kong is also economically freer as well as politically freer. It's interesting to see how that worked because in Hong Kong, and I, I've, I've been there, and, and it's, they don't have a central bank. Uh, they have, their currency is issued by private banks who then have to actually back up that currency. It's not simply a fiat currency, but they were able to get freer because they didn't have the thumb of a very oppressive government. The British basically left them alone. And uh, I think we've got Alex on the line now. Alex, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, absolutely, I can. Listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on during the next segment when we get to some better internet area. Uh, I, just, it, I just think it's important that everybody understands that it's just this simple. It's very, very simple uh, what's going on. And that's that this country and the whole world has become extremely naive and very powerful corporate interests have come in and basically taken over the government. Absolutely. And and it's just 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 really that simple and we've been so naive about it. This is just basically a globalist corporate takeover that is taking place. And I will um, I will uh, call you right back during the next segment. But 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 that's the bottom line. Just please continue on. Again, I'm reporting live here from London. And there's no place that we can better see that than at Bilderberg. One of the main themes this year, according to them, and I think it's the first time they ever released a supposed agenda. They have in the past released the names of attendees, but they've never released an agenda as far as I know. This year, the agenda was big data. And of course, in attendance were representatives from Google and Amazon. We had David Petraeus there, who famously said about a year ago that uh, they were going to be listening to everybody via our appliances. That's right, via our appliances. Now we see how this is panning out. The Atlantic had an interesting article from Connor Friedersdorf. He said, all the infrastructure a tyrant would need, courtesy of Bush and Obama. And I would include Bilderberg in that because that's what they said they're working on is big data. This is an interesting take he has. Let's assume he said that George Bush, Dick Cheney, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, their staffers, every member of Congress for the last dozen years has acted with pure motives 
in the realm of national security. Let's say they've used the power they've claimed, the technology they developed, and the precedents they've established to exclusively fight al-Qaeda terrorists intent on killing us, and that they've succeeded in disrupting what would have been successful attacks, and that Americans are lucky to have had men and women so moral, so prudent, so incorruptible in charge. Few Americans believe this all to be so. That's true. And yet, and yet, this is what they use to this excuse to create this massive infrastructure. As one of the founders, I don't remember if it was Jefferson uh, who said it or someone else, but he said, uh, basically, if uh, we were angels, we would not need government. And uh, because we are not angels, we cannot allow government to go unchecked, essentially. It's a very, very dangerous thing to allow this kind of trust in people. What he says is, let's assume that right now they are all angels, that they are super patriots, that they have no corruption in their midst. Let's just make that assumption. He said, in 2016, we don't know who's going to become president. That's why, again, the founder said, trust no man, but bind them down with the chains of the Constitution. This is a criminal organization that doesn't believe that they're responsible to any legal standard that is before them. They don't believe that they're responsible to the Constitution they swear an oath to. And if there are any senators or congressmen who are, in fact, still legitimate, then let them take these guys down with impeachment. We'll be right back with more from Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin, and we have on the phone live with us now, Alex Jones. Alex, how you doing? That's right. Usually when I do stuff from the road, we have an incredible uh, track record, but I guess my... Uh uh, mobile systems and things aren't working too well on the road from the UK. But I'll tell you what just happened then. I said, that's it. We've been going from report to report, from site to site, talking to our insiders, our witnesses about Bilderberg and meeting with people and things. And the internet is so intermittent uh, that I said, let's just pull over off this highway into this rest stop area, a little tiny rest stop area. We pull in. We I go live with you. And all of a sudden, police pull up, and there's like nobody else there, but another car's pulled up, and I hear British voices yelling, yelling, like it's a drug raid or something. I'm like, well, I guess uh, we'll just say that it's private corporations about a corporate takeover, and I'll be back on later. Because Richard gets out of the car to go see. I get out. The cops aren't looking at me. Some drunk driver was driving backwards down the highway and backed into the rest area right behind us. And then the cops were instantly on him, just screaming at him, like, what are you doing? Because it was like a highway with people going 80 miles an hour down it. I mean, it was like, it was like a Laurel and Hardy event. I thought, why? I thought, man, the cops are really on you. We pull into a rest area, and they're screaming at us in two minutes. Uh, but they weren't even looking at us. So, so I'm back. But listen, this whole thing has been incredible. For those that don't know, Bilderberg is the real mafia. And I've, I've used this analogy a hundred times. I'll use it again. Until about 1952, because they bought off the FBI and blackmailed them, they, they said on the news there's no such thing as organized crime. You know, there's some gangsters and some gangs, but there's not big organized crime, you know, running gambling, running prostitution, running all this stuff. And J. Edgar Hoover, who was paid millions of dollars, obviously, in payoffs, that's all come out and been released now. Uh, and they also were, were blackmailing him over some famous sexual stuff. Clint Eastwood just put a historical film out about that. He liked to dress like a woman. And, and, and nothing against you know whatever he's into. The point is, <laughs> is that is that he used files, he used wiretapping, he used you know you know all these systems to basically uh, suppress people. But the reason I was getting off you know into uh, the mafia is that the mafia is not just Italian. It's not just from Corsica. It's not just from Sicily. It's not just from Rome, Italy. Mafia is just organized gangs of powerful combines. And the best and easiest way to make money is just control government and control competition. And these people are the anti-free marketeers. And listen, I go on the BBC today on their biggest uh, Sunday press news show with like 5 million viewers, they report. It's like meet the press. And I go on there and I know for a fact that WikiLeaks has released Bilderberg documents. I know for a fact the National Archives has released them. I know for a fact 
that they want a post-industrial world and they want to set up a world government and they want to get rid of the family and they want to impoverish people and they want to deindustrialize the West. I mean, this is all fact. I've made films on, I've got all the facts. They didn't want to hear my facts. I tried to give the guest I was going to debate from the Times of London, uh, who's always attacking me over here, uh, you know, I tried to give him facts. He said it's a conspiracy theory. I said our government runs Al Qaeda in Libya and Syria. It's a war crime, you know, to, to take our liberties in the name of fighting Al Qaeda. When meanwhile our government created it and runs it. And he goes, "You sir are insane. It does not exist. That is not true." And the show before us had professors on saying, "Is it right to be funding Al Qaeda in Syria, or is it wrong?" and admitting they're committing atrocities and are a hundred times worse than Assad, who didn't attack anybody. So this guy's basically telling me in the green room, before we go on, that is ridiculous. You, you are the most delusional man I have ever known. Our government, does, and no other government in NATO, does not work with Al-Qaeda. I even YouTube some of this. I haven't put it up yet because I haven't had time to upload all the footage of me arguing with him in the green room. And, and and just, I'm like, look, the TV's on. They were just talking about it. Whatever, you claim whatever you want. So I go on there and they're like laughing. These guys just a few years ago were saying Bilderberg didn't exist. And then right before I come on, they have two members of Bilderberg group on. One of them on the steering committee, both government, high-level ministers, the British government, going, these people claim we're putting stuff in the water. They're insane. Prince Bernhard was an SS officer, part of Hitler's special guard that you know was going to be king of the Netherlands till that happened. And he had to you know, step back after World War II. He founded it. He was a eugenicist with his cousin, Prince Philip, married to the Queen of England. Uh, and these guys have openly talked about their eugenics views. Bill Gates says, this is what they're doing. These are the people we give hundreds of billions of tax money to every year to prop up their derivatives fraud. And it's it just, I'm tired of playing along with some British caricature, you know, guy sitting there trying to demonize and attack me when the BBC is known for being involved in the first Bilderberg group meetings in 54. And I interviewed a member of the European Union, uh, Union Parliament. You ought to interview that Batten uh, Gerard Batten, 10-minute interview uh, in, in the last segment today because it was so powerful. I know we heard it uh, Friday, but it was just so oh, yeah. powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he even knew the name of, of the German legislation. He even laid it all out. This is historical that Hitler had a plan for an European Union to take over countries that they didn't militarily invade and to, and to buy off their politicians and covertly take them over. It is a fact that Bilderberg was created by the globalists. It is a fact that they use it as a corporate global robber baron takeover. It is a fact that this global domination has now taken place and people are waking up under it. It is a fact that all this illegal garbage is going on. And that's why I said, I said, if I, if I go in there and they let me talk, I'll be nice. But if they go in there and make jokes and snicker like they always do, and they had Tony Gosling of Bilderberg.org, an incredible journalist who's worked with, you know, at national TV stations, even BBC, worked there nationally. Tony Gosling was on there last week with this guy on one of their weekday shows, and he eloquently laid out the documents and how they set up the euro and how they set up the Baker bailout implosion and how it's all planned. And, and he just said, you're a fool. You're an idiot. You're a, you know, all these. So I, you know what? I don't respect people that don't respect us. And that's why it's a victory. Because just like when Piers Morgan happened, people at first were like, oh, that's shocking, about half of them, because they're normalized to just put up with slavery. They're, they're normalized to be calm and in a trance. It's about getting people out of their trance. But in the aftermath, everybody raves of how wonderful that was because in the hindsight, they're not shocked. It's almost like if a car is coming for you in the same lane and you say, watch out. You know, it, at first it's shocking, but later it wakes you up. And then to be at Bilderberg covering it with huge, you know, speakers blasting into the grounds, exposing them with 2,000 people on the grounds, another 1,000 or so that got turned away. It's just a historic event. And to see the police, I'd say about 60% of them that I talked to were coming over, shaking my hand, telling me I was right, talking about how they saw my film on 7-7 and how they knew that the radical jihadis were, 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 were globalist run. 
And it, it, I mean, the photos are on our Twitter at Real Alex Jones of the cops hugging me and stuff. Like they came over and wanted to hug us. They had ones saying they know and they appreciate what we're doing. Humanity is awakening. And we'll come back and talk more about that on the other side. But I have breaking Bilderberg news I haven't even gotten to. When we come back, I'm Alex Jones from London on the road. David Knight riding shotgun. Stay with us. To the Alex Jones Show, I'm David Knight here in Austin. We have Alex live in London. Our transmission there is going in and out right now. It is out, but stay tuned. He's going to be joining us shortly. Now, Alex was talking in the previous segment about a UKIP member, uh, Gerard Batten, who is a member of the EU Parliament. And Alex interviewed him at Bilderberg about the impact of Bilderberg and what it truly means and the history. Here's that interview. My name is Gerard Batten. I'm a member of the European Parliament for London for the UK Independence Party. And we're here today outside the Grove Hotel where they're having the Bilderberg meeting uh, because I'm one of those many people from many different political points of view who are asking the question, what are these people meeting for? I think this year is very significant because it's the first year in 59 years that we've actually got members of the mainstream press and media turning up uh, to actually interview people like me and Alex Jones, who's here and filming me today, and asking what's going on. That's a major breakthrough. Uh, and I think that the reason that people are very upset about this is because they don't know what the conclusions are of these meetings. Now, they say they don't have any conclusions, but are we really supposed to believe that 130, 140 people of the, of the most powerful, richest, influential people in the world give up their time, fly across the world to come here, uh, and it doesn't have a significance? I don't believe that for a minute. If it isn't significant, why would they come? If it is significant, what does it all mean? And I think the reason that party like mine, the UK Independence Party, is soaring ahead in the polls and getting votes is because people now feel that politics is something that's done to them and not something that's done for them. And this is the heart of the malaise. People feel that it doesn't matter what they think, it doesn't matter what they uh, believe, they're going to have these policies that they don't want thrust down their throat anyway. And this is where my party's different, whether you agree with us or not. A lot of people feel that we're sincere and we actually stand for certain things, and that's why they're voting for us. I heard you speaking with the London Telegraph just a few minutes ago, and, and you've obviously done your research because it's, it's been declassified. The CIA funded the creation of the European Union. Uh, UKIP's the fastest growing party, obviously, uh, now in the UK in the last elections because you guys talk about how you're losing your sovereignty and how you've got EU license plates and 80% of your laws or so are EU and you don't get a vote on it. Uh, but again, it's a corporate group that took over America, created the UN, created all this. It's not even really America, but it was the CIA, kind of this corporate body that's anti-free market, kind of monopoly men, that did set up the EU to get rid of the sovereignty of Europe. I mean, if Hitler would have come up with a corporate plan to take over, we'd all be... He did. Because, in actual fact, that in 1942, uh, the German uh, bank, German Central Bank, on Dr. Walt, under Dr. Walter Funk, along with leading industrialists, said, to how are we going to run the economy exactly. of Europe after we've won the war? Because at that time... You know your stuff. The EU is a Nazi plan. Euro Wirtschaftsgemeinschaft, the European Economic Community, that's what they called it, and it had a common agricultural policy, a common this policy, a common that policy. And I, I, don't, I haven't done enough research on this, but I'd be willing to bet that some of the uh, civil servants that drew that... That plan up actually found jobs uh, 10 or 15 Prince years Prince Bernhard was an SS uh, officer and he was the founder. <laughs> and Queen Bernhard of the Netherlands is here. Oh, the Queen of the Netherlands is here. And her son is uh, about to be king. Yep, and she comes to every one of these. Okay, so specifically, though, talk about the 60s and that vote and the CIA funding uh, the Europe. Uh, well, 1975 is the last time that we had a referendum in this country, and it wasn't about joining the EU because they'd all, Ted Heath had already taken us in with no mandate, no democratic mandate to do it. But, under a trade deal, just like in the U.S., we're uh, under free trade. That's yeah. what they told us, but yeah. that, everybody who knew anything about it knew that wasn't the case anyway. Uh, but anyway, we got in. Harold Wilson won an election saying, I'll give you a referendum on the EU and it was about whether we should accept his renegotiated terms, <laughs> stay in or get out. And uh, about, it, we don't know the exact figures, but the CIA put money into the Yes campaign. The BBC had meetings every day to make sure that, they can, that there was a Yes vote delivered. Uh, you know, major organs of the press were involved in that. So the No vote were totally outspent and outclassed in terms of a campaign. So is this not a corporate takeover via via EU government? Um, well, that was the CIA, so presumably they get their money from the government. So it's, I, I see this as an instrument of American foreign policy at the time, because as Henry Kissinger said, who do I talk to when I want to ring Europe? 
he doesn't want to ring 20 odd individual nation states and have to worry about dealing with them. He wants to deal with one centralised authority, a United States of Europe. So I see this as um, your, your corporate idea may well be very valid. Well, sure, it's Bilderberg that gives the orders in the US, though. It's the main contingent is Americans and Brits, and in some EU, we, we've gotten their minutes, we've gotten their documents. They say what you just said, Carl Quigley, who was allowed into their minutes in the 60s, wrote Tragedy and Hope, and he said, autocratic thing run by central bankers, end of freedom, controlling both major parties and countries, Democrat, Republican, Labor, Tory, creating the illusion of choice. Uh, the fact that UKIP's getting so popular, speaking out against the New World Order, they criticize you guys then, but it only makes you more popular. D does that signify that people are awakening and people like Nigel Farage and yourself are kind of the Ron Pauls of Europe? Well, uh, you know, I don't claim any great, uh, any great status for myself. Uh, basically, what we're doing, I think, is asking the questions and trying to come up with some answers. And I think more and more people are aware that politics is not being run for their benefit. Uh, and, you know, you talk about, people talk about this being a capitalist system. This isn't capitalism. Capitalism is supposed to be fair and, and open with a free market. And that's not what you're getting now in the, in the modern world, where things are stitched up uh, corporately, as you rightly point out. So it isn't a crisis of capitalism. It's a crisis of democratic government and a fair economic system. Sure. Uh Last question, this huge lobbying scandal, members of parliament resigning and things, isn't this the big lobbying scandal right here? They've gotten in trouble for criminal lobbying before, back in the 70s with the Lockheed Martin scandal and Prince Bernard. Well, I think that the uh, George Osborne, who's here, who's a minister of the government, as indeed Kenneth Clark, uh, may well be in breach of the ministerial rules because that lays down that they're supposed to be open about who they're talking to, and particularly with members of the press, they're supposed to log every meeting, and you've got people here who own vast swathes of the media in one way or another, so I think there may well be some questions asked, but I wouldn't hold out much uh, hope of, uh, of actually anything being done about it. Well, is UKIP going to call for criminal investigations of this? Well, I think what we do, when I get back to my office, I'm going to be looking at the rules in detail and writing to uh, David Cameron and raising the issues that I think are relevant. So we'll, we'll do our best. But I've written many letters, Alex. A lot of them get ignored and uh, don't often actually result in much action. But big things have small beginnings. Yeah. If, if you could speak for one minute to the to, to the Bilderberg attendees, the royalty, the, the uh, people, the, the corporate barons, the government regulators, the EU bureaucrats that are arriving with people that they regulate, if you could say say you know, one minute of words to them, uh, you know, as a member of the European Union Parliament, what would you say to them? I would say, if you are really here to talk about things in the public interest, which is what they maintain, why do you think you can achieve it in secrecy? Why wouldn't you achieve more by being public? OK, you could have a discussion about what the problems are and the solutions in private, but any, any decisions that you arrive at, any policy recommendations should be in public because you need to take the public with you. And obviously they're not doing that because the public wouldn't want to go on the trip that they've got planned for them. And, but I'd ask them to do that. If it's genuine, be open and honest about it. Because what people feel now is that, as I said earlier, politics is not something that's done for them, it's done to them. You had a great point, though, about how if they don't have any power... Why would they be traveling from all over the world in great expense and secrecy and paying for part of the millions of pounds being spent here if this didn't have any power? And we have so many of their minutes yeah. where they are they set up the euro. They brag. They created the brain trust in 54 with the trade agreements, Treaty of Rome, Treaty of London, and, and then later the votes to hoodwink people into this undemocratic system where the EU bureaucrats are above the law. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Alex, even as prominent and important as person as you are, I'm sure you'd find it difficult to get 10 minutes in George Osborne's diary. Absolutely. Uh, but he can come here and spend two or three days away from his desk, away from uh, his uh, onerous responsibilities, and spend it. He wouldn't do that unless it was important, and neither would any of these other people. So it must be very important or they wouldn't do it. I don't believe it's just a talking shop. These people don't have time to waste. They will only do it if it's, a, if it's significant and there's a real reason for doing it. This is the last question. I know you've got to go. It's just it's so amazing to talk to a member of the EU Parliament who's exposing it from the inside. Um, Looking at this whole event, every time the BBC or the London Telegraph or any of them come up and talk to me or they talk to you, they say, are you a conspiracy theorist? For a long time they said this didn't even exist. Now we force them to report it, and then we're somehow bad that we're wanting to know what policy is being made in there by this shadowy group. And we have WikiLeaks documents from Bilderberg. They've confirmed are real, where Kissinger says, illegal we do immediately, unconstitutional takes longer. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy known for war crimes. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot what your question was there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did... What do you say about them using that throwaway term of conspiracy theorist? Well, uh, well, I say, what's the definition of a conspiracy? It's, it's two or more people meeting in secret to achieve an end, which might be illegal or illegal. So in the 
most strict use of the word, it is a conspiracy because uh, we don't know what they're talking about. Unless they have no objective at all and it's just a friendly chat over a cup of tea, which none of us believe. And I think the bigger conspiracy, in inverted commas, has been the fact that the media haven't spoken about this for 59 years. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin. We have Alex now live on the line from London. Just want to mention one last thing here, and that is the uh, ProPure spe uh, special for Bilderberg, 15% off. Today is the last day to get that, so check that out at InfoWarsShop.com. Alex, we got you on the line now? Absolutely, and if people supporting InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsShop.com will get you there. You know, getting the high-quality water filters things that help them, help their health. But it funds our operation, so absolutely last day to get 50% off the lowest price on Broke here at InfoWarsStore.com. But I'm on cell phone now. We did great video Skype from a studio but uh, here in uh, London, but I never got back to our uh, makeshift studio, so I apologize to listeners and affiliates for that. But regardless, a lot of key info. Here's the bottom line. Why do we want to expose shadow government? Why do we want to expose shadowy corporate interests? that are anti-free market coming in and lobbying and taking over our governments. Because if we ever identify that fraud, which we've done, and expose that the corporate media, the globalist media, has lied to the public about this, it's game over. We have the moral high ground. I had the police, the senior police, women, men, coming over saying, I want to hug you with tears in their eyes, saying, we've heard your speech. We know what's going on. We've been listening to you for years. We understand we're not bad. We don't like what's happening. And it is, it's like beef for Vendetta in the final scene or something, where, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it's like what happened in Chelsea's Romania. That's why they want to go to robots and drones, because they will follow their robotic, criminal, technocratic directive. That's why Google's merging with Bilderberg. And that's why they've spent decades saying, there's no CFR, there's no New World Order. Federal Reserve isn't private. Fluoride's good for you. Vaccines are good for you. The government loves you. Yeah, their average low-level person in government's a nice person. Uh, they're just dependent on the system like everybody else, but the people at the top have an evil agenda, and they sugarcoat their agenda in good-sounding cover story. But if you just look at it from another angle, you see it all. And now we learn the NSA spying on conservative and libertarian groups. Of course it is. Of course, the Democratic Party is a complete uh, collectivist mafia. They're authoritarian. The Republicans are a bunch of power-hungry globalists as well. But the Democrats, worldwide, they've used so-called liberals to get their agendas through. They're the tip of the spear in the takeover. And we, the people, are waking up. But we're at a dangerous crossroads. Because if, if all this comes out and then we don't put the pendulum back, it just sets the precedent that they get away with everything. So here's what I want to say about Bilderberg. I'll, I'll be able to collect my thoughts. I'm very tired. I was on Coast to Coast AM with John D. Wells. What, a three hours sleep. I've been on the BBC everywhere else. I'm very exhausted. I'm not complaining. I'm just a little bit digging here. But so is my incredible crew, Richard Reeves, uh, of course, Paul Watson, uh, the entire crew back there at the studio, everybody, Leanne McAdoo here with us, everybody, and you, the listeners, supporting us. Ladies and gentlemen, we told you last Wednesday that government sources told us Bilderberg was going to go public with statements. Not one, but two of them went on TV trying to whitewash things. Uh, the uh, Treasury Secretary over here, the Exchequer, uh, Shadow Secretary, uh, all, and one other big one, trying to whitewash it. So that shows the kind of sources we had, where we had police and MI5, I'll just leave it at that, MI5 connected, we'll just leave it at that, we have sources inside the hotel. We have sources in the parliament. We have sources in the EU parliament. People know now the EU plan. Yes, it sounds crazy. History's crazy. A Nazi plan, the EU. Go look it up. Treaty of Rome, Treaty of Britain after World War II. They took that plan. They go, oh, this is going to work great. It's like I took the Nazi plan for NASA, the Nazi plan for the CIA. All of this stuff is with an authoritarian dream of the globalists, and this is so historical, what's happening, so pray for us, because in closing, I'm going to let David close out the show with all the news he's got, and then we're going to have, tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Mike Adams, and he does an incredible job as well, with David Knight and Mark Jackson coming in with news, but I'm back Tuesday, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to sleep a few hours, go on a plane early in the morning and fly in, 
But here's the issue. They've had Bill O'Reilly on Fox. They've had CNN, their people. They've had MSNBC with Rachel Maddow. And Glenn Beck and everybody the last two weeks come out and do stuff like play a clip of me yelling but not even saying what I'm saying and saying hate speech. It needs to be shut down on Fox News. And then Beck did some weird thing. And I've already said I'm not going to attack Beck. I turned the other cheek. He came out four days ago and said, Alex Jones's people are death threatening me. I mean, you could say the Dalai Lama's people are death threatening. You know, I mean, anybody can send an email saying that. And then how I'm evil and I'm bad and I'm dangerous and all. all. Joining with Rachel Maddow. To They're scared, folks, because you'll never see Bilderberg in our media until now because you're fired if you cover it. Okay, they want to have a managed left and right. They want to take this country over. They're anti-free market. They're anti-human. I'm a libertarian constitutionalist. And the left thinks big government's going to save them. And all they do is create a monster that special interests to control. The so-called right thinks all corporations are angels. When they're med- predatory corporations, crony capitalists, they're the enemy. America, the choice is now before you. The government runs al-Qaeda. They're spying on you. They ship the narcotics in. They do all this stuff on record. I mean, what happened when they got caught shipping the opium in five years ago? They just went to Fox, CNN, BBC, and said, okay, we grow the opium and ship it in. Now, if it gets you with it, you're going to jail. I mean, because the troops were going public. They loaded them. They don't even hide it now. See what they're planned? Everyone's distributed. Major banks wanted the money. Comes out in the news, nobody gets in trouble. Or they go, oh, you made $300 billion plus at Wachovia, Wells Fargo off. You pay a $111 million fine. Like if I robbed a bank for a million bucks, you know, taking 4000 out of the bag as a tip for the cops. Organized crime is out of control. Major corporations, the Fortune 100, are organized crime by and large. And if they're not organized crime, the globalists are trying to shut them down and take them over like a few privately held corporations in this country. They don't control. It's mafia, plain and simple, and I am here in defiance of them. And yes, they asked on BBC, why aren't you dead? I've been attacked. I've been death threatened. I've been every a real death threat where they tell you they're listening to your phones and tell you what you were talking about. But my children have no future if we don't turn this around. None of us have any future. So I salute everybody who loves freedom. Does it mean I have all the answers? No. But I have a good heart and, and I have goodwill towards people and I want a future for humanity and I love humanity and I love having a, a, a fair and level playing field and, and, and real equity for everybody in a future and due process. I want justice. I want America. And the idea is a true liberty back. And all of us working for that, instead of being cynical, can do it. So we officially closed out the big coverage of Bilderberg 2013, a devastating victory for humanity as we expose the shadow government. And knowing the enemy, as G.I. Joe says, he is half the battle. Knowing the truth, that's why they keep you in the dark and treat you like they're morons. But humanity's awakening. That's this great time of threat. David Knight, Mr. Proof, great job. Folks, continue to follow InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, The Backup. Follow us on Twitter, Real Alex Jones. Get the June magazine before it sells out, InfoWarsStore.com. Support us, buy the Wake others up. Get PrisonPlanet.tv subscriptions. One membership, five ninety five a month. is 11 memberships. Operation uh, Sleeping Giant. We've got Operation Paul Revere, $100,000 contest about to be announced. God bless you all. David Knight, take us out. That's right, Alex. What you said is we're at a very important juncture right now as we see all of these different scandals being released. First, we had one day we had their leak of Verizon. We, we found out that the government was tracking all Verizon customers. Don't tell me that they've got reasonable cause to look at millions of subscribers. And that's just one of the carriers. We know now that they're doing many, many of those orders. If you look at the number of that order, you know that they had at least 80 or 90 other orders already that year. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? You know, after that happened, we also found out that they were looking at everybody's data. Then we found out just recently that there is now a Justice Department is fighting the release of a secret court opinion that finds their own actions unconstitutional. Now, this is in the midst of revelations that the government has conducted extensive top secret surveillance operations. We find out the Justice Department is trying to keep secret an 86-page court opinion that determined that the government had violated the spirit of federal surveillance laws and engaged in unconstitutional spying. Yeah, no doubt. 
Now, the interesting thing is, like Alex said, what are we going to do about this? If we don't do anything about it at this critical juncture, then what it does is it normalizes these criminal practices. We do see, as Politico is reporting, that there's mounting concern over NSA and Congress. Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee is shopping around bills that would address portions of this. But the question is, why would they obey this law? Where are the senators and congressmen who are going to lock these people up? Not just pass another law they're going to disobey. They ignore the Constitution. They ignore the FISA Act. Why would they pay attention to any more restrictions on them? We need to take some of these people and, as Rand Paul said, put them in jail where they belong. And that may go to the highest level of government. It should go to the highest level of government. Join us tomorrow.